done. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. We just bubbled it. Ten minutes. Let's talk about the future, the place we're going to spend the rest of our lives. Henry Ford once said that you can have your Ford car any colour you like, as long as it's black. And the reason I joke about that is that this subject, climate change, the thing I make my living talking about, can be very black and it can be quite bleak. And I want to make it colourful. I want to make it more of a hopeful place, more of a rainbow. And to have a look at what colour the future could be for you. When we say, when we talk about the future, quite often we'll talk about blue skies, um, or the future could be green. But if you think back, if I say to you, the future is bright, the future is, you'll probably say orange. But there's lots of different orange futures. Here's one where we're on the highway to hell. You see the road sign on the left there says, caution, hell, one mile. Hell might be a bit closer than we think. So just how bright is it for us to continue down that superhighway where we're currently going? I've got, I'd like to share with you a headline from uh, the newspaper that I bought next year. It's the Future Times 2013, and I'm going to read it word for word. It says, we may have left it too late. We may have already triggered a mass extinction event of all life on Earth. So what could that mean? What would that mean to all of us if that were true? It may not be true. And climate change certainly isn't black and white. The future isn't black and white. But we can make things far too complicated as well. And I'd like to tell you a joke, an example of making things far too complicated. Sherlock Holmes and Watson went on holiday together and were in a tent. Holmes jogs Watson and says, sorry, Watson jogs Holmes and says, tell me, Look at the night sky above you and see what you can deduce. And poor old Holmes, who's always trying to impress, it's the other way around, isn't it? Who's always trying to impress, says, Well, in the northern hemisphere, we're clearly geographically we're in the southern hemisphere. And the meteorologically speaking, clearly the Andrade's geometry is coming. And he goes on, only more coherently than that. And Sherlock Holmes says, Holmes, you idiot, someone's stolen a tent. And it's those obvious things. It's the obvious of the close at hand that we can't see. We can't see what we're doing quite a lot of the time. We, what if this is what we were doing? What sort of a story would that make to be telling our grandchildren? My daughter often asks me what I do for a living. And she says, why don't you get a proper job instead of talking about the future? Which makes me laugh. And in a nutshell, because I could talk about this for hours, in a nutshell, we're burning too much of that stuff. We're collecting too many empty drums. Huge, vast numbers of, of, of oil that's generated over hundreds of millions of years just being burnt up over a hundred years, just in our lifetimes. And maybe the icebergs are melting because of that. And we're creating too much of this purple smoke. Whenever you burn fossil fuel, you're emitting carbon dioxide into the sky. If carbon dioxide were purple, and clearly it's not, the sky would have changed purple during my lifetime and in your lifetime, just over the last 50 years. It would have been a light shade of purple when we were born and it would be dark purple now. That's how rapidly we're changing the chemical composition of the air that we're all breathing. And I want to get back to blue skies again. I want to leave that dark place, that purple patch behind and get back to a brighter future that we could be proud of for my daughter Grace, for your daughters, for your granddaughters. Blue sky thinking. Quite often we think, how do we get from a fossil soaked world to a world that is powered miraculously suddenly by a few wind turbines and a few solar panels? We can't do that. We can't just flick a switch. But there are things we can do. Particularly at home, these are just some of the things that I do that I recommend to you using the train a bit more, Eurostar instead of flying. Those are my solar panels. And incidentally, my laptop today is powered by 
the charge I gave it from my solar panels. I've got one of these energy meters that gives me a spontaneous readout of the power I'm using. I haven't got one of these lovely hydrogen cars yet, but I want one. This little thing. Five minutes. Thank you. This little thing, I've brought one with me, a little light emitting diode, which uses one tenth of the energy of the bulbs that are all over this hotel, for example. So a tenth of the energy, a tenth of the CO2, and in terms of payback, also just looking at the money briefly, a huge return on uh, rate of investment. They cost about £20 still, they're coming down in price, but this pays for itself in just six months of use. And that's factor 10 reduction of how much energy we think we need. Another thing we could do, um, I wonder if I could enrol your help, sir, for the presentation. I wonder if you could just flick one of the light switches at the back of the room and see if we can just reduce our CO2 and our energy costs by 50%. Because that's all we're using in this room. So just like that, maybe it's a bit too dark for you, but it's not rocket science. It's more important than that. A few figures. Um, tons of fun. It can be fun. I, I need to remind myself sometimes because I've been to that black place. This can be tons of fun. That's an average US or a Marlowe footprint. That's costing that person £5,000 a year for their footprint. My footprint costs me 500 and I want to get that down. And it's four tonnes a year instead of 25 tonnes. We've each got a footprint. Another day I'll take you through all the detail of, of what makes up a footprint. Um, but does anyone in the room know your carbon footprint now? And would you like to? Is anyone interested to, to know that number? Thank you. So part of the programme that I want to talk to you about today is a programme uh, where we start to look at the man in the mirror, or the woman in the mirror. Instead of saying someone else is to blame, we start to take responsibility for our own backyard and find out our footprint, just measure it. And then maybe tell a friend, then maybe shrink it, then maybe share that knowledge. Three minutes. Be the change, be happy and be infectious. Because we're not infectious unless we're joyful and unless we're loving what we do. So I want to help put that fire out. Um, I want to see if anyone in the room at the end of this presentation will join me in that. I want to do the best I can and leave a legacy. I've always wanted to be a fireman. And I want to have a vision of me in my old age when my daughter looks at me and says, what did you do, Dad? Well, he, he helped putting the fire out in his own backyard. And I've given myself a gold medal for that as well. So some people might say, come off it, Dave. Cats, cats chance in hell? No, snowballs chance in hell. And a good friend this morning gave me the metaphor of a crystal, a snow crystal, being very, very flimsy, but put them together into lots of numbers, and you've got something quite solid, a snowball. You can make it even more solid, you can make a home out of it. So by being little crystals out there, crystals showing the way forward for our children and grandchildren, we can make a huge difference. We don't have enough time, though. This is really, really urgent stuff, I believe. So rather than me sign you up to some program where there's a franchise of loads of carbon coaches, I'm going to give it away to you all free today. And if you want to call yourselves carbon coaches, you're welcome. Uh, all you need to do to call yourself a carbon coach is to know your footprint and to be talking about it and spreading the word on how you're shrinking it. That makes you a carbon coach in my book. So that's my gift to you today. Um, and as a man himself who did the funny dance used to say, uh, make the change, looking at the man in the mirror. Change is ahead, rather than staying on the highway to hell, the invitation today is to sign up, to call yourself a carbon coach from now on, and to go around telling people why you're a carbon coach and what it involves. And I'll just close now, reiterating my final point. Um, this is, if you remember, it's 2013's Future Times, and we still have time, minute. time, minute, we still have time to change that headline. So, with a slightly different emphasis, we may have left it too late. We may already have triggered a mass extinction event of all life on Earth. I would like to invite questions. I've finished my presentation. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, who has the first question? Dave, what can I practically do to enrol in that? Thank you. Right, today. What can I do today? Thank you. There's a website. Um, I'll give you the link. Million Carbon Coaches. You can put your email in there and you'll be kept in touch. Free of charge. No commitment. Okay. Is that okay? 
Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, next question. I've been sound cynical. What's in it for me? What's in it for you? Um, um, you know, we all like to help the world and you know, we do our bit for recycling, but actually, why should I do this? What's in it for me, apart from the legacy? Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's you for answering. It's been cynical, sorry. No, you're not. Thank you for answering your own question. Um, there's nothing in it for me, so I'm not selling anything today. So there's nothing in it for you, other than the legacy. And I hope that the prospect of you telling someone ten years down the line that you were part of that firefighting team might be, might be enough. Also, it's very low entry barrier. You don't have to do a lot. You just have to know your number and tell that to someone. So, is that a good enough answer? 20 seconds. Thank you. Who would like the last question? Does anyone have a last question? If not, I will thank you very much indeed, and the website will be at the back of the room. Thank you.